Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I am Rodis2099, so I asked you guys, and most of you said, we want to see comics first. Um, so this is how this style of video will go, a sort of downward shot. I will move stuff across, you will see them, you will enjoy them, because that's the rule of the game. But you're going to have to, uh, I'm just going to give you my recommendations. I was going to do a full in-depth review of all of them. And that turned out, while I was planning it out, that it was going to take an hour and 45 minutes. So, I'm a little bit against that, because I don't even like making 20-minute videos, which I do quite frequently, <laughs> apparently, my god. Um, so, a lot of these are old, and a lot of these are newish. I still have a lot of comics, an incredible amount, because I've been collecting them since I was a kid. So, I want to talk about... My favorites later in the video, um, but I want to talk about some of them that I feel more nostalgia to. Um, and most of these are Spider Man ones because, well, a long time ago in my basement, I was a boy and I was growing up in what was considered one of the golden ages of comics. Comics were being released every Wednesday or Thursday or someday. Um, and everyone was happy. Uh, it was fantastic. I mean, we got the best of the best. We got new Marvel characters added frequently. We got old Marvel characters brought back. We got Iron Man starting out. We got Spider-Man. We had the Fantastic Four, and we had everything. And all of it was intertwining. Like, I love that. So, all of these are my Spider-Man ones. Now, I, as a kid, bought all of these. Now, how would I buy my comics? Would I go to a traditional comic book store and buy them? No. See, as a kid, I wanted to buy the newest and greatest comics, but they were all kind of out of my ballpark. <laughs> they, they were around one to two dollars, which I couldn't afford. My dad didn't really think that comics were great because he preferred me reading normal standardized books. And I still love normal standardized books, but they're very comic related. So, I really was like, I kind of want to just buy some comics. And he's like, if you can find one under a nickel for each, I'll buy you all of them. And I went, that's something I'll never find. But, <laughs> have no fear, for I found Salvation Army. Uh, and other thrift shops, thrift stores, places like that. And they sold all of these old comics. And I was like... My my dad bought them all for me, and nearly all of these were in there. Now, there was a couple more that I've collected over the years. Not that X-Men one, but it was mainly these, these six. These six really were my start into comics, because this is what I found as a kid. I found them all for pretty cheap, and they were like a quarter or something, maybe a little more each. Uh, because they, of course, don't know, <laughs> and, uh, so my dad decided to buy them for me, and I, I just escalated from there. I became more into comics, and my dad realized, hey, these have actually pretty good stories and meanings. I'll let you buy more. And so I got the newer ones, the greater ones, the best ones. So these are all so, sort of from varying years, from probably, like, the good Jim Lee days to the original Steve Dinko days, but probably not. So, we're just gonna go from top to bottom. So, you probably already saw this cover. The Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man vs. Doctor Doom. Plus, Spidey's reunion with Uncle Ben. What? And I, I already knew Spider-Man's origin, so that was kinda good. But I was like, whoa. He meets Uncle Ben again? Which now sort of happens frequently. Now, it has this whole kind of overarching story of Spider-Man trying to face off against the Tinkerer, I believe, and Doctor Doom gets in the way, gets frustrated, tries to take him out, and they have pretty big, fun, cool scenes. And Tinkerer, uh, well, Peter, gets pretty knocked out. I mean, he gets beat up, which I loved. And it sort of does a whole call back to his origins. And that's really what I like from this comic. And there's a lot of old people returning. MJ, stuff like that. And I just think it was a really good comic that I enjoyed. Um, and even though I'm not the biggest fan of Doctor Doom, I still thought it was a great 
comic. And I really recommend this to anyone who wants to start getting into Spider-Man comics. If you can find this one, it was the giant size 3, 350th issue. And it was normally 150 US, but I got this for like pretty cheap. It's a pretty cool story. I really like it. So if you want to get it, find it. <laughs> so you're probably wondering, how do I have all of these? Well, I kept them. <laughs> I, I sold all my other ones. I kept these because these were the ones where my dad was like, you know, you can make money off them. You could sell them. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I could. I just decided not to. <laughs> So, this is the other one. The Return of the Sinister Six, part three of... You don't know. Um, now on sale twice a month. That was pretty cool. Um, getting them for more than a month was awesome. Uh, someone dies! That still makes me laugh. And there's, of course, the little Mysterio box over there. And I believe that this has Living Laser. I, I forgot. But it focuses on him interfering with Kingpin's plans and sort of getting messed up. There's a lot of good emotional scenes as Peter is a normal person, which I like, and that unmentionable scene. And also, Doctor Strange has a cameo in it. I think that's awesome. In a day where, right now, <laughs> we don't know if Spider-Man's ever going to be able to talk to Doctor Strange again or reference him, um, it's pretty cool that, like, Back then, they were all together. Which I feel most people don't really realize. Like, whoa, everyone, every Marvel character will be here? Whoa! But you start to realize they were always here. Together. Which I like. Um, I really like some of the action scenes in this. And some of the dialogue is just so funny. It's so good. Well, I wouldn't say funny, but it's definitely like... Great. It's a good read. If you need to find a comic book, find this one. And it was during the time where it was $1 US. Uh, again, I picked it up for pretty cheap. But I really like this one. I mean, it's just so fun. And the next one is The Amazing Spider-Man. The greatest bi-weekly saga of all. Um, which is the Round Robins. With that. Again, boring. So guest starring is The Punisher and Dark Hawk, which I love Dark Hawk. I love Dark Hawk, and I never really found out about him until now, and I definitely want him to kind of continue. I would like him to kind of be well-known, because he is a pretty cool character. So we follow kind of some interesting stories. I mean, really interesting. And you get a lot of cool characters in it. You get some mixes of... Like, everyone coming together, and one of my favorite characters is this guy. Now, I forgot to read this beforehand, but I loved him, and I really want to include him in my MCU, because he was like a ninja robot, and he just, oh, man, so cool. Um, I do really like that, uh, see Moon Knight. I really like that, uh, that it shows, that it has Moon Knight in it. And, uh, yeah, really, I just... Love this comic. I love it. Um, the whole sort of beginning, it sort of shows a small beginning to Darkhawk. And you're like, oh, okay. And then it sort of like evolves into him being a pretty cool character. But I definitely like it. I definitely like that the Punisher shows up. Uh, that is oh, that is definitely cool to me. Because um, I'm a big fan of the Punisher. Especially sort of how he was in the original comics. How he was less... Just pure murder, and how he was more like trying to stop crime instead of being the source of crime like he is now. And some nice action scenes between Spider-Man and Darkhawk and Punisher and the Metal Guy. And even some little cameos from Moon Knight, which I like. I love Moon Knight, so I'm glad about that. Also, tell me in the comments below, who do you want to play Moon Knight? Do you want... Uh, I know some people were talking about, what's his name playing Moon Knight? Um, I forgot his name. Damn it. What was his name? Oh, Andrew Garfield or Shia LaBeouf playing uh, Moon Knight. I, I want Shia LaBeouf because I definitely feel, I like Andrew Garfield, but like I don't want Moon Knight to be a 
just a pretty boy. Um, and sort of just be seen as like, oh, that pretty guy. That pretty boy. Um, I don't really want that. Um, and I definitely don't want Keanu Reeves as him, because, I mean, that, that would just be terrible for Keanu. I think he can play any number of people, but I don't want him to play Moon Knight. So, the next comic that we're looking at, which I started with, how you... Oh, here's Spider-Man. And this was during the time where they were only 65 cents. Uh, you do the math. Um, and, uh, I really like this time because it was the symbiote Spider-Man, which I'm going to talk about later. Actually, I'll talk about it now. Uh, most of my favorite comics are the symbiote Spider-Man ones, the ones where Spider-Man is in his symbiote suit, because it sort of is showing, like, how twisted the mind can be if it's inflicted by something. It sort of has a way deeper meaning, and, uh, in one of my classes in high school, we dissected Spider-Man, all his, what the whole symbiote thing means. Actually, maybe we didn't do it in high school. We did some extra... We did something. I forgot what it's called. So it has all of Spider Man fighting against this guy. Fit for life. Um, and you get really nice action scenes. Some really nice dialogue from Spider Man because you think that him being sort of weirder and evil with this suit on, he would say like stupid stuff. But he still feels like Peter Parker just trapped inside some monster's mind. Um, and I really like that. I, I definitely like this comic. I think that's great. If you have to find a Spider-Man, Symbiote Spider-Man comic, find this one. It's beautifully drawn, and it has that nice old comic smell. But that one I'm not too as detached by. I, I don't really like the story at all. But one that I really like the story of is The Spectacular Spider-Man. 64 pages, which was a lot. And it was $2 because it was so many pages. And it was such a big, big book. And it was part two. What could be worse than falling into the microverse, which Spider-Man does in this issue. He falls into the Spider-Man. He falls into uh, the whole microverse. And he just keeps on just shrinking and shrinking. I would really like this one to be an MCU movie or something. But, I don't know. I, I just still don't know what's going on. I feel that they're lying to us or something, but they could not be. So, you see Spider-Man. That's his size. And I really like that because, as a kid, you think, whoa, he's an action figure. That's what my mind thought. Whoa, he's an action figure. And so, all my playtime with my Spider-Man action figure, which don't... Make that sound any weirder than it does. Was all like, man, Spider-Man's in the microverse. I better help him. And, uh, and then he grows bigger. And then he grows smaller. Is that Dark Side? It's not, but it looks a lot like Dark Side. And it does have some cameos from other great characters, such as Prowler, Silver Sable, some Sandman. And it has sort of, at the end of the comic, it sort of has just villain stories, which I like. It sort of just talks about the villains. I think that's a great thing to do, just talking about the villains, because the villains are, well, the main power of this. Now, this one, uh, it's definitely not my favorite, but, eh, I saved the best for last. It's definitely not the best. At last, Spidey and the New Warriors together. Um, plus the solo adventure, plus the solo, and more. And the last, at last, Spidey is with the New Warriors, which consists of Nova, Sunstorm, I think, I think that's their name, Night Thrasher, and some other characters that you will never remember. Now, again, with the last one, this was 64 pages, but it's, of course, a little... More expensive, a little more cash. It was two twenty-five. So this one is definitely not my favorite. I still enjoy it. I definitely find the art pretty cool. But besides that, I, I never liked the new warriors. I never liked those characters. I never liked Night Thrasher. It's, I like Nova, but it was definitely wasn't when he was a part of the new. And sort of most of the villains in it aren't, aren't decent. 
it's really just in a, it's just a bad story. It's definitely not my favorite. A lot of people like it. I can see why. It's a, it's a good story. I definitely think that it's good, but it's just not my favorite. But it does end in that note. What? What? Yeah. Um, it sort of starts uh, a solo story of Venom. And once upon a time, a very dark time. Father, forgive me. Blah, 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 Venom. Which I definitely like. I definitely like this. I feel that this is a great scene. He sort of has an anger fit about Spider-Man. And he gets angry. And he, yeah, that's it. That's it. But I really liked that 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 story that it just showed you what you you can have multiple stories in one, which I definitely think that calls back to the well the start of the MCU. Whoa, Captain America is called back in Iron Man and called back in Thor, leading up to Avengers. What? <laughs> so anyway. Now, I wasn't big into the X-Men, but I remember owning a couple, and these ones I did not own then, but they were some of my favorites. So, Giant Size X-Men, this is the one where it introduced new characters from different parts of the world, and uh, I think that was definitely cool. And they fight, but that's a good one. I, I found it at my local comic book store, literally yesterday. Um, I found it, they just had it. And they're like, yeah, they did a whole reprint, redrawn, re, well, not redrawn, but like, re, fixed, I guess, Fi not fixed, retouched, to make it look better. So I like that. Um, now, sorry for the obl obligatory jump cut, but jump, and I'm back from the ob obligatory jump cut. My dog was a barking at my neighbors, and my neighbors were getting scared. So <laughs> that's what was going on. But, in other news, my other X-Men comic is this one, where, uh, where I really like this one. I mean, it's just amazing. It's in space, and that's all you gotta know. Pick it up, buy it, please. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's just great. I love it. It's just a great comic. I mean, get, get these two, if you're gonna buy them. Now, moving on in the video to my suggestion title. So... The one what if I always recommend is what if the Silver Surfer possessed the Infinity Gauntlet. I really hope that this one becomes maybe a what if story, but maybe not. Uh, I definitely love the look. And I mean, I just, I can't say anymore because it's great. Read it. Buy it. My other one is one of my favorite, favorite teams where all of it is a huge book. It is Guardians of the Galaxy, Tomorrow's a Avengers. So this is the uh, uh, original Guardians of the Galaxy, not the new ones that you're concerned with. So, character-wise, we have Charles 27, Martin X, Starhawk, and a couple of other characters that I really forgot their names because I'm more... Attached to the original. These are not the total original. But one familiar face is Yondu. Who don't tell. Yondu is a uh, sort of similar fi figure. Oh, and I forgot. This is Vance Astro. That's Vance Astro. If you don't know, uh, he has Captain. Mar he has a Captain America shield. And uh, he's a pretty cool character. I definitely think that this one, maybe I'm wrong. But one of them, Captain America, gives him his shield. Because he thinks that he could be a better leader. But this one, I really recommend if you're trying to get into the Guardians of the Galaxy. Because uh, it does character bios. So there's Char Charlie 27. I call him Charles. Charles! Arden X, Nikki, Starhawk, and Yondu. So I definitely think that this will start a uh, full-fledged... Um, I definitely think if you looked at the ending of the... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, it sort of stays like, let's go steal some shit. Uh, it definitely is leading into a original Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Or TV show, or just mention. So yeah, that that's it. This is the 
uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Tomorrow's Avengers. Now, if you also are really into the big, into the Guardians of the Galaxy, get Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a uh, just, it's just called Guardians of the Galaxy by Jim Valentino. It is the sort of continuation, and it is pretty good. I definitely like it. T features such characters as Cosmic Ghost Rider, a updated suit for Yondu, which he keeps on changing suits. Vance Astro finally having a shield and being a really good character. Starhawk being a noble leader. Charlie 27. S still being Charlie. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely not huge, but he is a good enough character. Now, my final two suggestions until I get to my number one favorite comic that I own in my collection. Starting off with Deadpool Classic. Volume 3. I buy a lot of these big volumes because I want to get all the comics in that run. And this is the best way. If you want to start reading comics, this is the best way to get them. Do, do this. Um, because I think that's just, it's just better. Um, so it is usually sort of the starting of a new artist and just continues until that artist leaves. But sometimes they do have to break it up because the story is long and the art is just never left. But, um, I recommend this one. There's not too much I can say besides it's just the beginning three, the third year of Deadpool. This is the beginning two year and there's the beginning one year, but that one is more... It's definitely if you're more of a new Deadpool fan, don't get that one. It's not as interesting. This one, he fights the Hulk and also fights a lot of restrictions of being a comic book but on to my favorite favorite comic book line series whatever you want to call it it is another Deadpool one it is Deadpool the good the bad and the ugly now this is a great series it features Deadpool Wolverine and Captain America probably the best three characters in the MCU or just in general in comics. I say MCU only because I prefer the MCU cap to the comic book cap. But this one still makes comic book cap look like Captain America. So, in this, uh, it sort of does do a, well, sort of a callback. <laughs> it starts out originally with Deadpool working with the Heroes for Hire, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. And it's talking jive and taking less. If you don't know what that means, jive is a made-up language from the movie Airplane. And it is uh, apparently what black people speak. Uh, and it's all set in the 80s. Uh, I mean 70s, my bad. Um, and it's very, very, very funny. It's a lot of funny scenes. And I, I'll admit, this is definitely not a great one if you're just starting to read comics because there's a little bit of violence in it. But basically, this guy is trying to uh, basically make... Well, he's trying to do illegal stuff. Because uh, part of the story kind of relies on you knowing that he... You don't really know what he's doing. But yeah, he's selling illegal stuff. Oh, and there's a... Uh, I put it now with a scene that you probably don't want to see. As your children. But again, YouTube says that my recommended age group is 50 to 51. No, it actually doesn't. And it's pretty, yeah. And then it continues into what if. And then it continues into what if he got broken free. And, uh, sort of continues in the modern times. But after that, which is really my least favorite of this sort of line. It gets into the real stuff, the real timing, where Deadpool is with Logan and Steve, and they, and I, I if you want to read it, go ahead and do it, but if you can't read it because you can't find it, or it's just unavailable, t watch the TLDR video on Marvel, it's fantastic, I recommend it, I'm very big in this comic, like, I love it so much, like, it's my favorite comic book, um, um, I, I gotta finish reading the Batman, Batman Who Laughs, because I really like that. I really liking that. Um, so, I wanted to make this video in preparation for what is coming out pretty soon. I think maybe in the next couple weeks. Marvel 1000. 
<laughs> and it's going to be a lot of comics from Marvel just all bundled up. Every best series, every worst series, and I'm just excited for it. I'm going to buy it, trust me. Um, tr trust me. I'm going to buy it, and uh, yeah, I, I hope that you buy it too if you're big into Marvel Comics. If you're not, no worries, don't worry, it will be fine. Uh, I'll probably make a review of it because, I mean, I love comics a little too much. Uh, unlike movies, comics are something that you can easily get addicted to because with their overarching story, their complex characters, and there's a lot of time to explain a character, you can definitely get sucked into them. If you haven't read any comics, I recommend going to a local comic book store or anywhere that you find might sell comics. So that's all I have to say for right now. Sorry again for making this video long, but I was saying it will be long. I definitely hope that you stuck around this till this very moment, because uh, I gotta thank you guys. Um, and yeah, uh, I'll see you in the next video.